Um, so uh, today's action, obviously, often very kind of indecisive, tentative. Um, market got a little bit of a jolt yesterday, had been assuming uh, that we would get more confirmation of the peak inflation story, and that was going to be uh, a reason to get more traction, perhaps, in the market. Uh, you've been negative for about a year on the market. You've been t in tune with the prevailing trend. What makes you think from these levels, still down 15, 18 percent or whatever, from the highs, that there's a, that much more downside? Sure. So I think yesterday, I think mean, the CPI number was a, was a big deal and somewhat of a game changer to a lot of the narrative out there. Um, you know, here we are a year and a half into this inflation issue, and we're putting up a 0.6 percent month over month core CPI number or annualized at 7.2 percent. And so the idea that inflation is going to magically come down without the econ economy suffering significantly, I think yesterday was somewhat put to rest in that in order to get inflation down and really squash inflation like Powell's talking about, you have to unfortunately hurt the economy. You have to reduce demand. And having a soft landing, having the S&P at 4,000, having the housing close to the highs, that's not going to do it. So if you look at what the market's pricing in right now, they're pricing in that the Fed goes to 4.3 percent Fed funds rate. You, to put that in you know, perspective, right, we're going to go from 0 percent to one of the highest Fed funds rate in 20 years in a matter of one year while quantitative tightening is going on. So that's a recipe for lower multiples, a much weaker economy, and ultimately weaker earnings. You know the, the counterpoint to a lot of that is probably going to be, look, the leading indicators of inflation seem to be pointing lower. After World War II, inflation did magically come down after a huge post-war shock. Uh, it was just a matter of, you know, getting rid of the supply issues. And then you have this sense out there that, you know, corporate and consumer balance sheets can withstand a little bit more of a slowdown in the aggregate economy. Mm -hmm. And by the way, historically high and declining inflation is a bullish setup for the market, you know, if you're looking out several months. So uh, how does that fit in? So I think from an inflation perspective, what's different now is that it's been going on for a year and a half. And a lot of the transitory issues that we were facing early on around supply chains, a lot of those have passed. Uh, oil was a big contributor. That is now, you know, pulled back. Mm -hmm. And so the breadth of inflation has now gotten has now gotten wider. So I think that the I think it's what it's shown is it's been much more challenging to, uh, you know, to get it to get it to go to, to move lower. Right. Yeah. Um, you do have, you know, a peak to trough 23 ish percent mm -hmm. S&P decline. Uh, a lot of that registered as a valuation decline. Now, earnings estimates have been trimmed back uh, for the third quarter. So that process is underway. Uh, you've had this rally off the lows, and it seems like the market has been kind of in this range and trying sure. to figure out if that was enough to price in what, what awaits the economy next year. So, I mean, right now the market's trading at 17 times earnings. So, so if you look at that multiple of 17, 17 times, we look at it from a bunch of different directions, and all of them suggest that that 17 multiple is extraordinarily high based on the current environment. So the 10-year average multiple over the, last, uh, over the last 10 years is 17, where we are right now. Yeah. But the 10-year yields at a 10-year high, the Fed funds rate headed towards a 10-year 10, 10 high, the five-year real yield is a 10-year high. Earnings, I think everyone would agree, are closer to peak rather than trough. We have inflation that's a 40-year high, 40-year high. So all those would suggest, if you just didn't know anything else, right. that the multiple would be towards the 10-year lows, not at the average. So the multiple needs to come lower. And then as far as earnings go, um, you know, even if earnings come in in line, I think it's, I think it's the best case scenario right now, the market should still trade, still trade down. Yeah. And we think that the odds of earnings staying where they are right now, when you have peak margins, earnings well above trend and a, an economy that it's going to have to slow down to get inflation down, it just seems it's highly unlikely that earnings estimates will stay where they are. So I think the argument for where we think the market's going to the low 3,000s is, mm -hmm. is a very simple one. It's, it's a 14 to 15 multiple on earnings and earnings that are down you know, a mere 5% from 2022, which is not heroic yeah. at all of a um, situation.